So we were saying that this is going to be a very uh, tough watch, uh, one that's going to be uh, a lot of emotion uh, for others, open wounds that people don't want to revisit at all. Well, that's unfortunately not the case here. And it's episode one. These are my thoughts, my reviews of Selena and Yolanda, The Secrets We Keep, uh, the Oxygen documentary series. Here's what I did, guys. And what I would love for you to do is go to thelatinoslant.com right now and join me in reading uh, the article that I wrote for our website. And uh, really, these are my, like I said, just thoughts and fleshed out ideas on part one called The Woman in the Red Truck. Reaction and review chilling. So part one unique uniquely reminds us of the history of Selena, her rise, and the particulars of the actual homicide while introducing Yolanda Saldivar's family and herself. Also the investigative team and the hostage negotiator at the time. So there's already some fascinating insight that I myself did not know. Now, if I could watch this without being influenced, then the better I can give you a non-partial judgment on this documentary. And yeah, that was kind of just my, my challenge. I, you know, um, I actually was a little surprised at how I was able to kind of detach from, from it. Uh, maybe because it was so procedural, but I do realize that what's coming up, what's happening is that ultimately, and I say this in my article, that uh, Yolanda and her family are trying to frame a new argument that maybe it's more of a manslaughter level type of crime. What are your thoughts right now? I can tell you that who I was watching it with infuriated her. And she was not, she's not necessarily a a um, hardcore Selena fan. She was like, if I was, this would infuriate me. So I get it, guys. I absolutely get it. So let's get back to the article and uh, read some more of what I was uh, penning. Here are my thoughts and critiques while watching. Besides the um, rising potential new development secrets between the two, supposedly, this is also a glorified defense for the court of public opinion to perhaps grant Yolanda that parole in 2025. What they're trying to paint is, interestingly, what were the contents of the purse in the safe, which included a resignation letter that the prosecutors were throwing under the rug. Was this letter, what this letter, what this letter proves is that Yolanda, prior to the meetup, tried to clean her hands of the professional relationship with Selena and clearly, and get clear away from her and Selena's family. Journalist Kat Gardenas even admits that this adds confusion to an already very clear-cut case of murder as to why this was not part of the trial. And Chris Betta's admission that Selena did, in fact, receive the letter. What's further interesting is that the investigators is the investigators that were involved in the case were the were ones where one pokes at the holes in the weak police work from not reading initial from not recording initial interviews with Saldivar to not following up on the resignation letter. On the other side, the detectives who worked the case uh, state of Saldivar, in fact, st stated that if <clears throat> she turned in the resignation letter and wanted to resign, she would have just walked away and Selena would still be alive. One chilling segment is when Saldivar's family is listening to a tape from Saldivar's home. Tape machine of voicemails where Saldivar had moved out of the house. She already took a job as a nurse that was going to begin orientation in another town. But also to the many messages that Selena herself left for several days, trying to find Yolanda, so as it seems. Indeed, Yolanda was trying her best to distance herself. Shocking that the public... Nor authorities had never heard this tape before until this documentary. Absolutely intriguing. The playing of the tape brought tears upon hearing the voice of Selena to Tina Saldivar, the niece of Yolanda, 
It's f- further resolute that Yolanda was indeed trying to distance herself while Selena was indeed trying to bring her back into the fold. And yeah, you you know what? I wrote that and I still believe that. And in regards to what I heard is that you heard you heard day after day. This is after <clears throat> the March 9th meeting and before obviously the March 31st, you know, uh horrible encounter where I believe it was a three or four days of voice messages that Selena left at Yolanda's house. Now, in, in, from listening to those, from listening to those, from what they showed us, and maybe they'll show us, they'll, we'll get to listen to more in part two, but from listening to those in part one, it sounded uh, as that of a friend reaching out and wanting that friend back in the fold. Not was Not like, where are you? I need my paperwork. Where are you? You owe me this. You owe me that. None of that. So, yeah, that is interesting. That is interesting. I'm not going to lie, guys. All right, let's get on back to this. Make sure that you are subscribed to our newsletter on the latinoslant.com. It's free. You get a free weekly newsletter on all the things we're doing on the website and our YouTube channel. Here we go. As this is the first episode, which is about two hours in length, is winding down, I had more haunting thoughts. Suppose that Yolanda was threatened by the people that did not want her around, Selena. Suppose all that is true. She's got, that's got nothing to do with the fact that she killed her friend in cold blood and that she's still not taking responsibility for that other than it was an accident and I miss my friend. Also, too, I think about celebrities and the people they keep close to them which you hear about from bodyguards to agents to secretaries. These are people that become part of their families for many years based off of loyalty and trust. That being said, the dynamic of the relationship started off as one of professional and later became a friendship. Those same people working for celebrities might be master manipulator sociopaths, as well as playing upon the light of said talent from Bob Marley's manager, money laundering issues, to other various celebrities you hear these horror stories all the time. Unfortunately, this is the one that ended in death. So while some of these points in part one are interesting, that maybe could prove more of a manslaughter level of crime. The fact is, it is being done a year before the possibility of parole for Yolanda Saldivar. What are your thoughts? Stay tuned for part two. It is entitled Room 158. Last thought I said. I was surprised from the Univision reporter who had been one of the interviewee subjects in the documentary where she refused to speak on why Abraham Quintanilla was intimidating to her, why he intimidated and scared her. You can see it. You can see it in her face. She refused to answer that question on camera. And I wrote, interesting. Oh, man. Uh, I'm not going to say anything else further uh, in regards to that. Uh, I will say, let me hear your comments and thoughts. And I will have a part two review on print and here video as well. Hit me up right now. Uh, Yeah. I know, guys. I know. Wherever you're at, keep your slam fuerte.